Suspense, which is usually heard at this hour on Thursday nights, is taking its customary summer holiday. Suspense returns to the air seven weeks from tonight on Thursday, September 1st. deep in the remote hill country of Afghan, face to face with the fierce Bataan warriors, trapped into a hopeless fight from which there seems no escape. We offer you escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight, we escape to the north of India and to a battle long remembered as Rudyard Kipling described it in his famous story, The Drums of the Fore and Aft. When I came out from England to serve as a news correspondent with the British troops on the northwest frontier of India, I was attached to a regiment known as the Four and Fit, Princess Hohenzollern's own Royal Light Infantry. Four and Fit. But now, behind their backs, men call them the Four and Aft. When certain words are shouted in front of other barracks, the troops may come out with belts and fists, but the mere whisper of Four and Aft brings out the men of this regiment with rifles in their hands and murder in their eyes. I think perhaps the story of how the fore and aft got its name may be really more the story of Jakin and Piggy Lou, two of the toughest and most lovable little monsters who ever banged a drum or tooted a fife in a military band. They were both about the same age, with curly hair and the faces of cherubs, and inside were two souls that should have belonged to a pair of devils. I must have seen them before, of course, but the first occasion I can recall was at an informal court the colonel was holding in the orderly room one morning. Piggy and Jakin were there, and they were in trouble, as usual. All right, Sergeant. Read the charges. Yes, sir. The charge is made by one Smithers, a civilian, that while walking back of the bazaar at 6 p.m. last evening, he was set upon without provocation by two drummers from the regimental band known as Jakin and Peggy Lou, and by them was beaten into near insensibility. Well, uh, go on, Sergeant. Mr. Smithers states further that he was struck down by the two defendants and while lying on the ground was kicked repeatedly in the face and ribs, escaping with his life only through the timely arrival of a detachment of the guard. That's all, sir. Well, what about it? Jakin? Piggy? Is this the truth? Oh, yes, sir. We gave him what for, all right. That will do, Piggy. Yes, sir. All right, Sergeant. Turn them over to the bandmaster and have him tan their hides. Yes, sir. Come on, you. Oh, wait Come a on. minute. Oh, <laughs> Begging your pardon, sir. But can't we say nothing in our own defense? Oh, what if a blooming civilian said he'd report you for having a bit of a barney with a friend? Suppose he tried to get money out of you, sir, and then he... That will do, Piggy. You were fighting. Well... Only between ourselves, sir. <laughs> that doesn't count. We can't have no blinking civilians interfering with the business of Our Majesty's regiment. All right. We forget the birching. But you're both confined to quarters for three days. Oh, but, sir... All right. Dismissed. And uh, throw away that pipe you've got outside, Piggy. You're too young to be smoking. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Ah, oh, confounded Kipling. I don't know what to do with the lads. Not really bad at heart, and they've never known any home at the army. Hmm. Where do they come from, Colonel? Oh, Jakin is from some back street in London, and Piggy Lou is straight off the Calcutta docks. Oh. And in both cases, ancestry unknown. <laughs> well, they seem loyal enough to the regiment, at any rate. They are, and loyal to each other in their own way. I'm inclined to think sometimes they've got more real spirit than all these new regulars put together. Hmm. Um, aren't you a bit overloaded with green troops, Colonel? Overloaded? My dear fellow, 90% of the regiment were in Manchester factories or Lancashire farms six months ago. 
Can't make a soldier that length of time. Any chance of action very soon? Between ourselves, Kipling, we'll probably move north in about ten days. Oh, no, no, not to the front, of course. We'll give them a few months to shake down before they go into action. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's the only thing to do. There's one thing certain. This regiment is not ready for action yet. Only, uh, don't write that back to your paper. But the gods who govern armies seldom choose the wisest plan. On the Afghan border, a large force of Pathan guerrillas began massing near the Khyber Valley, being held in check temporarily by a regiment of Highlanders and a regiment of native Gurkhas. A week later, the four and fit, a regiment totally unprepared for action, was ordered to march north, contact the two regiments, and carry out a joint action to disperse the enemy. Parade ground and barracks began to hum with preparations for the coming campaign. Privates walked with a new swagger, and the young officers nearly shot one another at pistol practice. But to Piggy and Jakey, the excitement was like salt in an open wound. For the band was reduced to 20 men, and the drummer boys were being left behind. Blimey, I won't let him do it to me, Jakin. Me, what's going to have a career in the army being left behind like an old boot. Oh, why should you worry? Now you can stay here with that blooming girl of yours. Oh, what's a girl when the regiment's going to the front? And besides, how am I to explain to her about being left behind with the women? What do you have to explain anything to her for? She's only 13. I've been telling her I'd get myself a medal when the first campaign came along. And how am I to do it now? I heard in the barracks they're going to take Tom Kidd along. He's to be the bugler. Of course, he's 18, though. He may be 18, but I can plaster the wall with him any day. And with one hand behind my back. Perhaps we could bash him round a bit. Oh, just enough so as he can't bugle no more. You could hold his hands, Piggy, and then I'll kick him in the... No, no, no. He still wouldn't take us. Our reputations ain't what they might be, you know. Yeah. Oh, well, for myself, I'd just as leave stay here and do a bit of loafing. With our own regiment going into action? Why, well, I'd as leaf have my... Oh, look who's coming. It's the blooming colonel himself. And so it is all alone. You know, Jake and my boy, I think I'll go and have a little talk with the colonel. You wait here. Have you gone daft with the east? Here, yeah, catch my pipe. Blimey, now we're in for it again. <clears throat> Begging the colonel's pardon, sir. Right, what, what's that? Well, Piggy, I... Oh, the drum's in revolt. Oh, uh, no, sir. I, I, I'd like the pleasure of a word with you, sir. All right. Go ahead and have it. Well, sir... If you thought the world and all of your regiment, and it was going off to active service without you, sir, then how'd you feel? I, uh, hmm, I, I'm afraid I should feel a bit left out of things. Well, that's how Jaikin and me feels about it, sir. You've no idea what a campaign can be like, Piggy. Why, you'd flop in your face in the first 20 miles. Oh, no, we wouldn't, sir. We're good at marching. I've told my girl I'd bring her back a medal. I've just got to go. I see. Uh, Think you could pass a physical? Not the slightest doubt of it, sir. We're both of us very healthy for our age. All right. I suppose it's unheard of for a regiment on the border to take drummers along on active service. But uh, if you can pass the medical officer, you can both go along. Oh, blimey! We're going to the front! Oh, I mean, thank you, sir. Oh, uh, I mean, Jaken! 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 <laughs> The regiment marched out of the station two days later, and all those left behind lined the road that led past the parade ground. The band stood by and played them out, waiting to fall in at the rear of the column. And although Jakin perspired and beat on his drum manfully to cover up, it was quite evident that Piggy Lou was not with the band. Jakin kept glancing at the cedar hedge behind him, and I had a pretty good idea why Piggy was being detained just got to be awful careful and, and take real good care of yourself, Peggy. You're so venturesome. 
I'd worry all the time. Well, it's odd, Chris. I'll grant you it's hard, but... What's a man to do when his regiment's called on active service now? Yeah. Give us another kiss. Oh, Peggy. Mm. That's more like it. If you'd have stayed here like you'd ought to, you could have had as many as you wanted. And if I'd done that, Chris, you wouldn't think anything of me. Like as not, but, well, at least I'd have had you with me, Peggy. And all the thinking in the world ain't like kissing. And all the kissing in the world ain't like having a medal to wear on the front of your coat. Oh, who cares about a medal? Just stay with me, Peggy, darling. And I love you true forever. Well, aren't you going to do that anyhow, Chris? You said you was. Oh, of course I am, but it'd be lots more comfortable if you stayed here. Don't take on about it, Chris. I'll be coming back. And I'll marry you someday, too. I promise. Oh, but when? Years and years, perhaps. You'll be careful, won't you, Peggy? Well, a man has to take his chances in the army, Chris, but if it happens, I'll be thinking of you right to the last. Oh, don't talk like that. Oh, now, here. Give us a kiss. Peggy, come on over here. We're about to fall in. I've got to go now, Chris, my love. Don't you be forgetting me. Oh, I won't ever, Peggy. Here, I, I made something for you to take with you. Oh. Well, what is it? It's a button bag. All the regular soldiers carry them. I put some of me air in it. Well, now, it's awful kind of you, Chris. Oh, it ain't made so well, but I didn't want nobody else to help me. Not even Mum. I'll carry it right over my heart, so long as I'm alive. Oh, don't say things like that. Piggy, come on. Give us one more kiss now. I can't stay no longer. Oh, Piggy. Goodbye, Chris. Take care of yourself. Goodbye, Piggy. Be careful. Oh, be careful. I'll be coming round to see you, Chris, my love, when I get back from the war. Oh, Piggy. Well, it's about time. And luckily we're not both in trouble. Here, Stick this blinking fife in your ugly mouth and blow on it. Petticoat chaser. Just beat your drum, soldier, before I decide to beat on your ruddy head a bit. Tell the colonel he can shove off now. A great hour on CBS Friday night is This is Broadway. Rising stars bring you their top acts and their problems for the future to Clifton Fadiman, Abe Burroughs, and George S. Kaufman, three show business experts ready with advice. Be sure to hear This is Broadway tomorrow night and every Friday night on most of these same CBS stations. And now, we return to the second act of Escape and tonight's story, Drums of the Fore and Aft. And so the four and fit went north to the wars. First by troop train, and then on foot, when the last rail had left them with a seven-day route march before they'd reached the front up ahead. And during those seven weary days, the regiment began to crack. The men weren't hardened to the long miles of marching, and they found themselves dead tired before noon of each day. The food was bad, and the water was worse. And on the second day, the snipers started in. They would hide in the tumble rocks of the low brown hills beside the road and wait for the column to pass. The first sign of one would be a flash and a puff of smoke. And some man on the long line of march would die without ever seeing the enemy who'd killed him. And even at night, the tired and nerve-shattered men could find no rest. If anything, the night hours in the dark tents were a good deal worse than the daylight hours on the dusty road. Oh, shut up, Piggy. I've got to get myself some sleep. As if I ain't marched just as far as you have. Oh, my feet's fair killing me. Uh, well, it serves you bloody well right for getting us into this. We could be back in the barracks now, 
Living on the fat of the land. And half way to becoming musicians, like as not. In which case, I'd be sleeping in a regular bed. And having some decent grub to eat for once. I'm afraid you're not the army type, Jake, and perhaps I shouldn't have talked my friend, the Colonel, into letting you come... Shut up in there! Hide that teeth before I come in and take a belt to you. Yes, sir. Here. Don't have to go calling a blinking sergeant, sir. That ain't no harm in it. Ah! What's that? That's the left wing. Stay in your tent! Piggy. That's another one of our sentries got himself killed out there. Oh, them baton beggars can sneak up in the dark without making a sound. Then they take their bloody long knives and slice a man All open right. as neat as you please. Hold your fire till you see what you're shooting at. I wonder what they look like, Piggy. These here petons. What's it matter when we can't even carry rifles? I ask you now, Jake, and look at this in my hand. How's a man to get himself a medal when all he's got for a weapon is a blooming five? Late afternoon of the seventh day, weary, savage, and sick, their uniforms dulled and unclean, the four and fit rendezvoused with the Highland Regiment. Hey, lads. Here comes the new regiment, the four and fit. The four and fit, eh? And may I ask you, what is it they're fit for? <laughs> some of the men bore wounds and some with stretcher cases. But the real casualty was the regimental morale. These raw recruits had marched out of their station in the south with the band playing. And somehow they'd imagined they might march gloriously into battle the same way. But no band played when they slugged to a stop at the brigade encampment. Oh, blimey. Look at them chaps over there wearing petticoats. A lot you know. They're islanders, me lad. And I've heard a man had best take no liberties with them. Oh. Well, Picky, do you think we found the ruddy war at last? And what else? Ain't that a full-blown general over there talking to our colonel? Had a bit of a... Rough time of it coming down, sir. My men have been rather mauled with no chance of a fair return. They only want to go someplace where they can see what's before them. I understand, Colonel. I wish I could let you have a few days to recover, but I simply can't spare you just now. Oh, there'll be no need of it, sir. All we're wanting is one good night's rest. I see. Well, you can pitch your camp next to the Highlanders, Colonel, and I suggest you call a general inspection before dark. We plan to attack the enemy position at dawn. Very good, sir. So, it's active service you wanted, Piggy, eh? And how much longer do you think they're going to keep us standing here with the bloody daylight barely coming over the hills? Just take a look at them patans out there on the plain. Must be eight of them to one of us, right down the line. It makes it that much easier to get a medal. Now, how do you hope to get a medal? Maybe you're going to blow their bloody eardrums in with your little fife. More like it, we'll not even have a chance to see how the beggars look. The band, as you might have heard, is going to wheel and retire when we reach them rocks out there, while the regular soldiers go in and attack the enemy. Which, I might say, is exactly the way I'd plan it myself. I got no fondness for being sliced up like a leg of lamb. Ah, you got no spirit, Jaikin. Them as want spirit can have it. As for me, I... Uh oh here we go, Piggy. Right, your Jaikin. Ready now. The two, by the right, we... Watch yourself now, Jaikin, and step lively. Just keep your eye on me, and I'll make a bloody hero out of you. Only someone had blundered. Someone had misread an order. And the four and fit moved out onto the plane to attack the enemy force... Alone. The four and fits moving out. At the clump of rock, the band wheeled and halted and continued to play, while the ranks opened to form a skirmish line and moved slowly ahead. Hold steady, laddies. We have no orders to move out, and therefore we'll stand fast the noon. If the four and fit wishes to fight like hogs, then they'll at fight. At 500 the yards range from the enemy line, the regiment began firing at will. At will and wildly. In a few minutes, they'd thrown away half of their ammunition and blinded themselves with their own smoke. 
and farther out on the plain, the Afghan army stood quietly, firing occasional well-aimed bullets into the milling herd of oh, green the troops. brainless fools, they're bunching like a herd Suddenly, of from the main body of the Afghan troops, a small band of about 50 Pathan warriors charged forward and fell upon the startled Englishmen. These were the Ghazis, the suicide squad, always thrown out ahead of the Afghan army before any main test of strength. Swinging their long, heavy knives, they struck the close-packed British line. In the name of heaven, don't they extend into open order? The poor and fit wavered, reeling away from the vicious slashes of the murderous bone-handled knives, rallied for an instant and held, then broke, turned tail, and ran. Will you look at them laddies? They turn and run. I might say they make better speed to the rear than they made to the fore. Uh, they're anything but poor and fit now. More like it to call them the poor and off. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take them a long time to live that one down. <laughs> the fore and off. <laughs> The regiment took no thought for the wounded, for the men left behind. Nor did they stop until they jammed in the pass that led up to the hill. And the band, too, was carried along with them in their headlong flight. All the band, except two men. Piggy! You think them bloody Patan beggars can see us hiding here in the rocks? Oh, of course not. Well, I hope you're right. Bloomin' cowards running away. Now, weren't that a fine way for a British regiment to act? Had we done the same thing, we'd not be left behind here the way we are. Now, what's got into you? You're comfortable, ain't you? I may be comfortable, but I ain't easy in me mind. Ah, put a sock in it. Hey, hey, look. Somebody's dropped the canteen here. Mm. Maybe it's got rum in it. Well, well, now, how can you hope to tell by shaking it? Here, it? now, keep your dirty hands off it. I'll do the trying it out. Well, is it, Piggy? Is it? <laughs> no, it's water. Oh. Here, have yourself a free drink on Her Majesty, drummer boy. All right, sir. Shaken, look. What? Them pretend bakers is starting back for their own lines. Hey, keep your head down. Well, well, now with the blooming enemy retiring, perhaps our lads will come out and rescue us. Not them, the bloody cowards. Well, don't they know the Patans ain't chasing them no more? They can't see nothing but their own precious skins. Half a mo. Maybe we ought to give them a little music, show them it's all nice and cosy out here now. What? Do you want us to go and get our blinking selves shot? Oh, they ain't no enemy close by now. Come on, Jake, and take up your bloody drum there. Here, are you positive there was only water in that canteen? Oh, uh -huh. so like as not you're a coward too, the same as the rest of the regiment. What? I'll show you who's a coward, Piggy, my boy. Here, take your blooming fife. There, and stick it in your ugly face. Well, now, so you have got a bit of spirit. Maybe I'll speak to my old friend, the Colonel, about it. Oh, shut up and start blowing. Are you ready? Ready all. Now. <sighs> Where is it we're going to march to, Piggy? Back and forth a time or two in full sight. Then we'll wait in the rocks for the battle to start. Are they watching us? Hmm? <laughs> yeah, they're watching us. Oh, yes. <laughs> they're watching us, all right. Time held still, and even the Afghan snipers forgot their weapons, while two armies watched the tiny, red-coated figures marching back and forth on the battlefield alone. Aye, and I'll tell you for certain, there's a pair of brave laddies down there. All right, you bleeding cowards! Look at them out there! Are them two children the only brave men in the regiment? The men of the fore and aft lifted their heads, fingered their rifles, and stared without moving. And out there on the silent plain, back and forth marched Jakin and Piggy. Have we got to play these blooming instruments all day long? Ain't the blighters ever going to come back? Shut up, Jakin. Keep playing. 
Well, all I might say is, I shouldn't have ever let you talk me into this. I ain't cut out for active service anyway. I should bloody well feel more comfortable if I was back in the barracks. <laughs> Jaken. Jaken. Oh, you bleakin' heathen blighters! You've killed Jaken! All right, I'll show you who's afraid of you! Two armies saw them die from the sniper's bullets. Two armies and the men of the fore and aft. All right, men of the regiment. What now? Those two at least were brave enough to know how to die. Pigs, burn it! This time we attack and there'll be no turning back! Look at them, laddies. The fore and aft, they're going back to fight. Aye, look at them run. That's how it should have been done the first time. Aye, laddies, and now is the time for us. Orders or no, here's where we join the fight. Company, prepare to charge. Charge! Late afternoon saw the Afghan army wiped out. And the general explained to me how everything had gone according to his plan and how he hoped I'd cable that back to my paper in London right away. I turned and left him then and walked across the silent battlefield, walked out among the silent dead. The two tiny figures lay quite close together, Jakin fallen across his broken drum, and Piggy Lou, with the fight still clenched in his dirty fist. A bulge under his tunic caught my eye, and I reached in and drew out a button bag, embroidered crudely with the name Chris. I made it for you myself, Piggy, darling, and I put some of my own hair inside of it. I'll wear it right next to my heart, Chris, so long as I'm alive. I thought how Chris would soon forget and how the world's memory is no longer than hers. The sun was sinking away into the west. The button bag in my hand was soaked, damp, and over the left breast of Piggy's grimy uniform, over the pocket where decorations are usually worn, a brighter red stain had spread out through the coarse wool, looking very much like the bright red ribbon that goes with a medal. Escape is produced and directed by Norman MacDonnell. Tonight we have presented Drums of the Fore and Aft by Rudyard Kipling, adapted for radio by Les Crutchfield. Featured in the cast were Ben Wright as Rudyard Kipling, Hugh Thomas as Piggy Lou, and Terry Kilburn as Jakin, with Colleen Collins, Ramsey Hill, Alec Harford, Wilms Herbert, and Tudor Owen. Special music arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Next week, you are hanging by your fingertips on the sheer face of an ice cliff, suspended a thousand feet above instant death, with your strength running out and with no chance for escape. <laughs> Next week, we bring you an adventure tale, Action by C.E. Montague. Be sure to tune in at this same time next week when once again we offer you Escape. In just a few minutes, Casey, crime photographer, embarks upon another adventure with death. Tonight's adventure is called Crazy Like a Fox. 
Join crime photographer on most of these same CBS stations. Tip Corning speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.